Hey YouTubers, a working man's pride here today. Today I am going to show you how to replace the cord on an electric radiator heater that is filled with, I don't think, it's not a water, it's like an oil I hear. There's one over here as another example, a little bit different, a little bit smaller. The same cord, same applies. You can use a regular round cord if you want to. But you'll see why, since I had some of this style of cord, why I choose to use it. Now, if you're asking why am I replacing it, which you probably don't care, you're probably already replacing yours because maybe your dog chewed through it. The particular reason why I'm replacing this cord on this is because, well, one, when I got it from the guy, he wanted to throw it away. I asked him what's wrong with it. He says it'll heat and it'll stop heating and it'll start heating again. So I plugged it in and it, it, it started on and cuddled on and everything was working right. It made a weird smell but didn't pay much mind to it. And let me remind you, it smelled like a burnt rubber smell. So if you ever are plugging in anything electronic and the atmosphere around you did not smell like burnt rubber before you plugged that in, you need to unplug it because that means something is getting hot and starting to burn the rubber casings on your wires. When I went to unplug it, when I went to go pull it out of the socket, this was really, really hot to the touch. And if you look closely here, you can see where this thing is, looks like it was starting to, uh, see, get soft. And if you listen closely, here. you hear that clicking noise? That should not be making that popping noise. You can feel it with your fingers. It should not have excessive play. It should be tight. Like this one right here. You don't hear none of that. I can feel it. It feels nice and tight. It doesn't have all this movement. Because what is happening is these terminals inside are coming loose. They're, they're moving separately from this casing. As I went down the wire, it got uh, less and less hot. And, and it started to turn warm. And then it was cold. So my assumption is, is this thing has a short in it, and I think it's right here. Um, and this is common for anything with a cord on it. And my assumption is, is that it would get hot, it would cut off, and then when it cooled down, it would turn back on again and start heating again. So I'm going to show you all how to replace this cord. I've already had this apart, pinpointed this is what the problem is. All the wiring on the rest of the inside in here looks good. So I'm just going to do a video and showing you how to replace this cord. So... You take this screw out up here on this specific model. There's really not rocket science. I know some of them probably have a screw down here along with the screw up here. You take this out and this whole thing will drop out. If you look under here, it has this little thing that fits onto the seam of what you will see when you remove this cover, which it looks like this. So I'm going to remove this screw and I will pick y'all back up and show you what it looks like. Alright, got you back. And you wondering, that's a, a PH1 Phillips head screwdriver because it's a big, pretty big uh, Phillips head. So, once I unscrewed that, this whole thing drops out. Pull it out. I like to use something to hold on the screws. Magnet tray works good. Anything works good. A bowl, whatever. Then this whole assembly here drops down. And look, we got a little friend in there, too. Hey, little guy. Alright. Let me get work here on the room on the workbench here. Get y'all situated up here. So I can show you what's going on. Alright. So your cord, you roll it up, and it goes into this little cover here. There's your lid to it. Right there. A little friend right there. And you got this little retainer here that holds it. You can remove that with pliers. You want to uh, work it back and forth out this way. And it clamps that cord. That way you can't pull it through any further. And then it comes and wires in down through here. And you have a little tiny bolt or a nut. And then you have 
a Phillips bolt here on the other side. Now that pop rivet on this one, it's just it's just resting there. I've already had it off. Then I decided let me make a YouTube video out of this. So I'm gonna use because that's a pretty small headed Phillips. I'm gonna use my tiny little screwdriver set. And I'm gonna go with the biggest one I have, which is a 332. Which works good. But the problem is, is that bolt, that nut in there. Likes to turn with it. So you can use pliers. I even took a flat head. Rested the flat head on that bolt to keep it from turning. So you got to hold that nut from turning. Unscrew it and that screw will pull out and this will lift up from here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to use a little socket to make it easier. And when I get that apart, I will get right back to y'all. Okay, guys, we got this apart. This just come right on out. The nut right there. I still have a little friend here. He's escaping. I think he's hurt. I'll put him out of his misery after this video. All right, so your cord goes into there. You want to mark follow these terminals because you have a bigger one and a not so bigger one. I cannot remember which one is negative and positive, but just follow it from the head all the way down. And, and then usually one of these little braided cords here will have markings on it every now and again all the way down and the other one won't. In this case, this one has those little lines on that one and the other one's just perfectly plain except for it'll have a little bit of wording right there on this specific one. So I will chase it down. Now I need to figure out which one is negative and which one is positive on this one. But I will figure it out. So, like I said, get you some needle nose pliers here. You're going to want to, because there is a special tool for this, but I don't have it. You might want to get you a flathead too, or work it out from this one, and work that thing out. If you damage it and you can't replace it, just, uh, I don't know, take a washer and a zip tie, or do your little thing to get keep that from pulling out. And I will get right back to you once I get that thing out. Okay, y'all, I'm back. So, after fighting with this thing, I said, you know what, screw it. I'm going to replace in that part anyway. So, I cut that. And took these uh, wire cutters and grabbed that thing. And, and it popped right out. So, I'm going to teach you how to get that off of your wire. And it's really simple, actually. So, if you look closely... That thing locks right in there. You take a little screwdriver or a knife or some sharp object. You uh, pop that thing off. So I'm going to do that and I'll get right back to you. Alright. Pried it from the top. Popped off. Boom. I'll put that because it's salvageable. Now you can just Pull the rest of your cord out from in here. That's going to the scrap. Because that thing almost caught my house on fire. Now, I want to take the air compressor. They look like little flat heads in there. And air compress this out. 
or you can just take a brush to it get it all off because there's going to be markings i'm pretty sure on this plastic telling you which is negative or positive let's see it says i don't see here but i'll be right back let me air compress all this crap off here including all that and i'll be right back to you all right y'all so i got everything air compressed uh decent um and i was correct those wires are held in there by little tiny i mean flathead screwdrivers screws not screwdrivers so i'm gonna go over to my nice little tiny screwdriver set and pick out the biggest tiny screwdriver which is a 332 flathead and i'm gonna unscrew these and i'll get right back to you all right y'all so i got those screws unscrewed this is what came out they fit in those little slots and those screws clamp them down so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take something a little sharp and these little tiny screwdrivers and i'm gonna gently pry open these crimped ends that way i can reuse them on my new cord so i'm going to do that and I will get right back to y'all once I get these things unpried. Un and I will show you what they look like. Okay, guys. I got those terminals off. The ends of these wires have been twisted tightly. And they have been uh, dipped or covered in solder. So, since these have been covered in solder and all i am going to do the same thing to the new one i'm going to strip the wires back twist them tight and i'm going to solder them insert them into these old ends crimp them back down put it back in here of course i gotta run this wire in then put this on then pop this in here put everything back together you put that back down on there screw those things tight so I'm gonna do all of that and I will get back to you right when I'm about to put this cover back on all right so I know I said I was gonna do all this other stuff and then get back to you but well I lied so I got these soldered I'm gonna go ahead and our little buddy's still there Go ahead and get these crimped back in here, and I will get back to you once I'm done crimping them back in. Alright, you all, I got uh, the cord all nice in there. Now I'm going to throw this on. I'm going to make sure to get this tab here. You see that groove in there? Make sure to fit it up on that lip. And then... Put your screw back in. It can be difficult getting it through that hole. Like on here. Um, and then that's basically all. I'm going to get it back together. I'm going to take it up to the house. And I will get back to y'all then. Okay guys, sorry for the background noise, my dad's downstairs jackhammering. I got it back up to the house. Here is the moment of truth to see if it turns on. I wrapped it up in here. You can see how it goes in there. Let me get this cord untangled I get back to you. Alright, got the cord untangled. We're going to plug it up. And this is the outlet that I had it plugged up in. I know there ain't nothing wrong with the outlet. We'll set it to six. Looky there. Works. Now... All's left to do is to leave it on 
make sure it's not making that burn smell again let it warm up so that's all so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this camera down well you know what I'm yeah I'm going to do that so I'm feeling nice today and I'm going to let it heat up then I'm going to get back to y'all and let you know and if something does go wrong I'm going to let you know and we'll do like a part two on this repair but I'm pretty positive everything's work going to work A-OK -okay. so I'll get back to you and let you know uh, how it's working okay y'all so that's going to conclude today the update on this thing is that uh it's definitely got some other issues with it. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to do some research for myself. That plug-in was definitely a, a occurring issue. This thing is its still warm. Not as warm as it uh, was before. It's been in for about 15 minutes now. Which is about the amount of time that it was plugged in last time. So, a big improvement on the, it shouldn't really, anything that's drawing a lot of electricity is going to get a little bit warmth on the electrical cord. Uh, nowhere near is what it, it's not like, it's not supposed to get warm. It's going to get warm um, if you got a lot of uh, draw, which in this case, 1500 watts. But uh, it still smells weird i'm not sure i'm gonna continue to test it um i'm gonna leave it plugged in continue to uh test it and basically if it's really something else wrong with it um it'll burn up itself and that's how i know i'm not really sure what else it could be if the elements are going bad i don't really don't know um, but, uh, I think it's good, um, so, I'm gonna leave it at that, keep testing it, but, that cord was definitely an issue, so I hope this video does help you, um, also, if your radiator heater won't turn on, wiggle the ends, just cut, snip it, and put another end on it, that might not work because you might have a break somewhere in the wire. So, I hope this helps you. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.